Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, we're going to be interviewing the amazing Matt Lavaz. Now, Matt Lavaz is a professional speaker, personal coach, and business mentor with over 10 years in the industry. He has explored everything from coaching, counseling, psychology, atheism, Eastern spirituality and everything in between. As a father and a husband, Matt's search eventually brought him to Christianity, where he has found his home. Now, in all Matt's work, he uses the gospel of Jesus Christ to inform his direction, ensuring that all of his work is really God's work. So welcome, Matt. I'm so excited for our conversation today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. I've been looking forward to this. So really looking forward to where we take it. Wonderful. And once I heard about your journey, Matt, I'm like, I have to have you on my podcast because I'm so interested in your journey. Mm. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your story and, and, and how firstly you got into coaching. Yeah, well, so that started um, well over 10 years ago now. I was a personal trainer. And so I was into health and fitness and that was my first step into having, I guess, somewhat of a normal kind of functional life because before then I was a very rebellious teenager and I um, party too much and I, I really focused a lot on, on um, my career as a DJ. And so I went to all the parties all the time and I took way too many drugs. And then I actually found, I guess, a level of like stability in, in fitness. And then I became a personal trainer and it was kind of a, it was like an obvious next step for me was what's the next thing from personal training. My clients were all saying to me, I'm stressed. I'm worried about this. Can you help me with that? And I just thought, you know, I've got no idea what to tell you. And um, then I stumbled across coaching. I didn't really know it was a thing, but I yeah. started yeah. watching Tony Robbins videos. Like I think tons of people did. And then I had a friend that had done the course at the coaching Institute, looked into it and just thought, great, I think I'd like to do that. But I also seeing Tony Robbins, I was also called, I think, to be a speaker. Yeah. I, I was, I was looking for what's the thing that I, that I think I could do based on my skill level. Um, and I was always, I always wanted to speak to people. So I always, would strike up a conversation. I just wasn't very good at it. I had really, I think I was a very bad communicator, but I always had the confidence to do it, if that kind of makes sense, even yeah. though I was horrible at it. And yeah, that's that's how I came to coaching in the beginning. Yeah, wow. And so so tell me about your shift from coaching in, in the form of Christianity, because mm. that's really big, and I know that I'm, I'm from the Coaching Institute as well. I'm a student at the Coaching Institute and I, I feel a connection there because I've sort of gone through a similar journey myself in regards to coaching and the concepts of coaching and mm. then going into Christianity. Tell me about that. Mm. Well, I think like a, maybe like a lot of people, um, I used to think that religion was, from a coaching perspective, what we would call magical thinking. So in, yeah. I think magical thinking is actually a term um, coined by psychology, which means anything outside of yourself that you are going to outsource your power of responsibility to. And I always thought that's what religion was. So it's like, instead of taking responsibility for your finances, you could just say, well, God's going to take care of them for me. And I still think that some people may lean a little bit that way where they maybe aren't taking enough personal responsibility. I truly believe that, you know, God gave us free will and he, and he says in, in, in the gospel that if a, if a person doesn't work, then they shouldn't eat. I think that he wants us to work and take responsibility. Yeah. But um, I was extremely judgmental towards all religions. I really thought I knew best. I really assigned to um, the idea that science knows everything and actually, previously to that, though, I tried out a lot of different, I guess, what you would call Eastern spirituality. So yeah. yoga, kundalini meditations, um, uh, energy healing. Um, I looked at different um, types of uh, esoteric kind of dancing, you know, lots of different sexuality kind of 
practices. Um, I also explored lots of psychedelic drugs. So I explored things like um, uh, DMT and um, mushrooms. And, and I was always searching for where's the, you know, where's meaning? Where, where is fulfillment? How do you solve the, the conundrum of the, the human condition of kind of feeling hopeless from time to time? Yeah. Um, and the more I spent time in all of those fields, the more I didn't find the answer, the more I found it, everything that I learned seemed to solve the problem for a small period of time. Yeah. I found that everywhere I went. It's like you learn a meditation and you go, great, I feel good now. And then that kind of wears off and you go, well, now I've got to learn the next meditation. Yeah. And I've got to learn the next thing and I've got to do the next course and I've got to do the, I've got to go to the next level. And you've got to keep on ascending through levels of consciousness. And, and, and also, you know, for people that are still into that stuff right now, like, like no offense to anyone who's into it and exploring. I think that it's important for you to explore and find your own answers. And I don't want to seem better than anyone in any, in any way. Yeah. Um, but personally, what I found is that there wasn't really any answers there. And through my own despair really of thinking how do i how do i solve my own internal struggles um it really hit home for me when i was going to be a dad so when i knew i was going to be a dad me questioning what kind of a man am i became really important to me yeah. because i really wanted to be able to have my son look at me and say, I'd like to be like him, you know, or, or the, at least there's a bit of a demonstration for me on how men should treat women, for example. Yeah. Um, and at that time, I was really struggling with an addiction to pornography. Yeah. Um, and that led me down a, a really very destructive path, a really destructive path. And I think my relationship with women was horrible. Yeah. It was not one of respect or, or honour at all. And I really question that. And I think I, like many people, I had a moment where I reached out in desperation to, I didn't really know much about God at that moment, but I reached out to God and said, um, if you're real, like many people say, I'd really like some help in this yeah. moment. And um, from that moment on, it was a very progressive journey where I started studying the Bible and um, <clears throat> the Bible slowly started making a lot of sense to me yeah. and like it's given me a foundation for my life that I've never experienced anywhere else um, completely changed me in ways that I can't credit to myself yeah you know, I, you know, I'm I, I, I was saying to my I was I did a I had a bible study um, with a group of men this morning I was, I was saying I am convinced that I am a bit of a a-hole without God in my life I am I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm a very nice person without God, but when I have God in my life, I am just, I'm kinder. I'm more compassionate. I'm more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Patient. All yeah. of these things. I, I personally, I attribute that to God helping me yeah. through this, this personal journey that I'm on. So it's profoundly changed how I see coaching profoundly. Yeah. Wonderful. And it's interesting, a couple of things that you said there. One was that you said when you're going through, you, you're exploring and you were doing yoga and you're doing all of those things and you mm. mentioned that you were, you were not, you know, you weren't into religion. It's mm. interesting how <laughs> what we know now is that things like yoga is a religion in itself. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was really interesting um, because yeah. that's, that's something I, because I haven't grown up with a uh, Christian family. So it, it was, and still is, I'm still learning in regards to, uh, you know, living in a different way. And um, and so I never, ever thought like things like yoga had anything to do with religion. Or if I walk into a place and see a Buddha, I wouldn't think a Buddha statue. I wouldn't think anything of it. I wouldn't think, oh, that's a religion. Um, I just was so naive. Um, mm -hmm. But the other thing that you mentioned that 
that I loved and it and I, I thought of this this saying that a pastor said once and I can't remember it exactly but he said something like work as if your life depends on it um, but really you know it's it's really about God is the one that actually creates everything <laughs> but work as if you you're the one that actually can achieve it but it's really God that actually achieves it yes. something like that and I and I thought that's a really great thought to think about is that, that you know that you can work hard and work towards your goals but know that ultimately it's God that's going to create that for you yeah 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 completely I think it's a it's a big shift I think one of the major parts of what the gospel teaches us is that the good that we do in our life comes from God um, and it's you know the the enemy in the Bible is pride. So the biggest yeah. enemy is thinking that you are the solution to all of your problems and that you are the only, you know, you are the center of your universe and it's all on your yeah. shoulder where the gospel teaches us that you have a part to play 100%. You, you are responsible for your life. And it's just that there are certain things like being a good human being that are so hard to reach for and yeah. we consistently fail at it. And that's where the grace of Jesus comes in and says, well, I'll do these other, I'll do these bits for you. This bit's done and yeah. you can find peace here. And that's just profound. I think when, when you, when you get that, it's profound. It changes your life. Yeah. And I think you know, because we are, or as you know, we're all, all sinners. Mm. And, and so it, it, it's so, so interesting. A few weeks ago, I was, uh, I was in the car and, uh, you know, of course, one of the sins is lying. And I yeah. see myself as a pretty truthful person, right? But when I really start to analyse things and think of, because I was in the car and my husband and I we were talking about making sure that we're eating healthy. Like right. it was a really simple thing. And I'm in the car and I went to visit my house that we're building and I thought, oh, I feel like a potato cake, right? <laughs> and so I stopped and got a potato cake. And my husband rang me on the phone and I'm rustling, right, with this potato cake. And he said to me, what's that noise? <laughs> and I said, nothing. Oh, that's so funny. Right? And I know it's only a little thing, mm. but it's a lie. It's yeah. deception. Yeah. And and then after I thought about it, I thought, wow, I, ju I just slipped into that deception. Yeah. Uh, and after I did tell my husband about it, but it's it's we we are we 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 are sinners you know and um but i think you know i live for me i try and live my life as pure as i can but at the end of the day we are sinners we're not perfect we're not god um mm -hmm. and so um it was just all those little things are reminders now for me to go well you know uh you know i try and be the best person i can and it's good for me. It's an eye-opener for me to go, hold on a minute. And, you know, all these, that little lie, you didn't even need to tell it. Like, what was my husband going to do? You know, <laughs> was he going to go, wow, that's not good enough? My mm. husband would have laughed. Mm. But still, you know, I, I, I said this little deception mm -hmm. to, um, you know, um, to make myself feel, I, I, I don't know, it's probably from the past, you know, from not wanting to get into trouble, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I think that a thing that any, everyone can relate to, religious or not, Christian or not, is yeah. um, feeling guilty about things and yeah. feeling, feeling feeling ashamed of doing things. And one of the things that Jesus said is, "I came here not to condemn the world, but to but to save it." That's a really powerful statement because you didn't come to make you feel bad about all of your mistakes. Yeah, and a lot of the time, that's what it may happen to people is we feel horrible it's like you know i'm a liar i'm a horrible person <coughs> excuse me um and so where what christianity does for us or what jesus does for us is takes away our guilt yeah like you you are going to slip up every now and then and that's okay it, our, our heart changes though so we don't want to slip up all the time yeah um but we are free from that shame and that guilt. And that's the, that's one of the biggest gifts that, that change in heart. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How with, with what's happened in the world in the regards to 
the big COVID and all of that sort of stuff. Has that had any part in you um, in the last couple of years really focusing your direction towards God and Christianity? Yeah, it was definitely a part of it because yeah. um, so I think I would be in my atheism, I was probably still a little bit more um, a believer of what's called pantheism, which means that you believe that there is a divinity in everything and in everyone. And it's a very, very, very popular belief. So everyone is divine. And a lot of people say, you know, I believe in God, but I just believe that you are God and I am God and the tree is God and the water is God and everything's God. Yeah. And God's more like a life force. Yeah. So I was probably more on that um, position uh, where I probably wouldn't have called it a God, but I would have said that there's some type of energy in everything and that energy is good. Yeah. There's goodness in everyone. And then if you wrestle with, okay, so how come a lot of people are evil? The way that I would try and explain that is, well, bad parenting. So like, you know, people had parents that didn't love them and then they experienced trauma and then they were playing that trauma pattern out. And I think that there's elements of truth to that, right? So like our childhood significantly affects who we are. Yeah. But when I was when I was looking at COVID, one of the things that stood out to me was the intensity of the nastiness yeah. spreading around the world, um, and the just the, the the extreme lacks of compassion that I saw from our leaders, from communities, and you still see this now in politics. The divisiveness yeah. on topics like what do you do around um, like the topic of abortion that's just recently happened yeah. with the Roe versus Wade. Um, argument and then it's what do you do with um, uh, how do you treat uh, people that want to use different pronouns and there's I guess we only we mainly hear about the loudest voices in our media mm. one of the things that stood out to me is I thought okay well if everyone's good at their core gee a lot of people aren't acting like it right now there's yeah. a wave of people that are just nasty towards each other where I think it, it, we would deal everyone would have um, benefited from a large dose of compassion to be able to say, I wonder why everyone's making these different choices instead of like, for example, I remember one, I think the guy who's the um, head of the Northern Territory, I remember him saying, you know, like essentially if you don't get the vaccine that you are just a complete idiot, you're, yeah. you're just stupid if mm -hmm. you don't get it. Just that, that shaming. Yeah. All of that that I saw made me think, I don't think I can hand, I don't think I can now see all of that and then still believe that there's a divinity in everyone because they're definitely not in touch with it. Yeah. And the more that I looked into the Bible, and so the Bible has a very, very base, I think it's simple way of looking at the world that makes a lot of sense to me, which is that we're all made in the image of God, uh, which, which explains why people with or without a belief in God can do great stuff. Yeah. Like, are amazing at the same time though we are all as a default sinners and and I, that makes sense when i look at the world but it also makes sense when i look at myself it's like sure i want to do well but if i don't put some um balances and checks in place if i don't surround myself with the right people and if i don't for example it's been amazingly beneficial to be become a christian but i will default to some, some bad stuff. And I think that um, when we can recognize that in ourselves, for me, it, it helps me make sense of everyone. Yeah. Especially a non-believer. When I see someone do something horrible, I think, I don't think that's just because of their bad parenting. I think that's because their default is sin. Yeah. And that's the default of, of human nature. And we are capable of great things and we still want to do the right thing. But I think so we default to a very, very bad place. And obviously that's pointed out in clear terms in the Bible. Yeah. And do you believe that, because I think we are so, as you know, about social conditioning mm. uh, and it's everywhere. We, no one can go, away, you know, get away from it, from what's in the media, what's on TV, from, from the schooling that we went to. You know, if I had my time back again, I would absolutely be homeschooling. That's just something that I would be doing because then I would be giving the beliefs and values to, sure. to my child rather than the government. But I suppose, you know, for, for me, looking at our, 
it's it was really hard in some way from the conditioning that, I, that I've had since I was young to actually believe the possibility that the government weren't looking after their people, yes. that the government could pot- could potentially be evil, right? And that was my thought process. I'm thinking, is this, you know, I'd go overseas, I love to travel, and I always thought of Australia as very different from any other country. Yes. You know, so I'd go to a communist country and go, well, we're not like that. That's We'd right. never be like that. Um, but to, to change that belief system around that possibility, I think is has been challenging for me. And I can see that it's very challenging for other people to actually contemplate that possibility. Completely. I very much wrestled with that. And I that that was another major lever that moved me towards God because that was hard to accept. And yeah. I, I was talking to a friend about this many times and I said, you know what, I can, I can appreciate that that question is too stressful for some people to wrestle with, yeah. that it's easier just to say, no, they definitely want the best for us 100%. Yeah. And I, and I can understand why so many um, uh, people in the health sector because they're employed by the government and, 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 you know, have been trained by the government and see so much good, right? Yeah. So much good is done by our government and by people that work in the government. It's not all black or white. For yeah. example, our healthcare system, if you've, we had a, um, uh, our son was two months premature and we are eternally grateful for what we experienced through our healthcare system. The yeah. nurse angels, it was amazing. The follow-up system, like, my wife is from the Philippines and if we were, if we had our son in the Philippines, he may have not made it, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's amazing what we have. And then within that, yes, to accept that there are many decisions that are not made with our best um, uh, in, in mind is yeah. extremely confronting to accept. Um, yeah. for, for example, even just if you look at just the way that our healthcare has always been run, there are many, there are many more medications that we could have access to that yeah. would change our lives phenomenally that we are restricted from. Yeah. If you really wanted to look after us, you would make them available. You know, there's yeah. there's medications that I've benefited from that I've had to get illegally. Yeah. That uh, that improve my health significantly, like yeah. pork and cheese, and they're illegal. So yeah, I think that's a very challenging thing to accept that there are there are some greater evils at work in the world. Yeah. And and I think it's really interesting, and this this is based on what's happening in the world and also in with religion. I think that in regards to, say, social conditioning or critical thinking, why do you think, Matt, why do you think there's people that can look at things and because there's some really, with lots of things that are happening in this, this world right now, like I've seen massive shifts, of, as you said, in, in regards to how people are treating people, in regards to the compassion or non-compassion, in regards to uh, the belief systems of people. Like if if I'd said to people five years ago, you, would you be saying that people should be forced in some way to have, say, an injection? Um, like a flu injection or whatever injection, would you support that? No one that I know would say that, that they would support that. Mm. But then suddenly there's this whole shift of thinking and people uh, not looking at all the information. And I don't think it's, uh, and it's more so not the point of of what you believe, it's more so trying stuff on. And I suppose it's interesting because coming from a coach's perspective and having a lot of friends as coaches, a lot of my coaching friends have tried stuff on. Uh, And so I think it's ingrained in us to explore and and challenge our beliefs and things like that. But there's some people that are like, no, I'm just trusting what's told to me, what's told to me by the media, and I'm not even looking at it. That was probably the biggest frustration for me. It's yeah. like, why aren't you even looking? Just just open up and have a look and then decide. Yeah. Well, there's it's such a good question. And there's so many layers of complexity to the answer. 
Yeah. I think, that, I think that we're not really equipped to think critically about stuff. It's not really in our education. You have to really seek that out, learn it yourself, you know, do it, do an additional course or something like that. Um, <clears throat> Cause most people think in a very dichotomous way, it's, it's either right or it's wrong or it's black and it's white. And, you know, and I'm sure your listeners know very well that it's very rarely right or wrong or black or white. Yeah. There's gradients. There's all this gray in between. I don't think our government is all bad. I think they are some bad and I think they do some great and some horror. And yeah. just accepting that can be challenging for people. It's not an easy answer. Uh, one of the things that's helped me is from a thinking perspective, understanding that our brain works in a way where it wants to like close loops. So we don't handle uncertainty very well. Yeah. And we like to have answers to stuff. And so if you're not good at handling uncertainty, you've got a lot of uncertainty going on in your life. Things are changing. You don't know what to do with it. You've got no idea how to think about things. Then you have to go for a simple answer. Yeah. You have to. So the government's good. Let's just, let's just deal with that because it's way too uncertain and, yeah. and stress creating to think about any other addition. And if you think about what conspiracy theories have done, you know, a lot of people that go so far to the left or the right, probably mainly the right, you go extreme right, um, are nutcases, yeah. right? Like, and they're crazy people. Yeah. So you don't want to be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but the more you look into things, you go, oh, there's a little bit of truth to some of that crazy stuff yeah. my friend was saying the other day. Maybe they went a little bit too far, but, gee, I think they were right on point A and B. Yeah. And we've got so much social conditioning to fit in and to not be a crazy person and to be to be on the right side of politics. And like, if you just think about the fact that it's dangerous to, um, what's one of the things that's happening at the moment? Like um, people that can't define a woman. It's like, you, you can't even talk about that. What does that even mean? Just the fact that that was an obvious conversation that we were all safe to do and that now we're not is an, is an example of the social pressure of you'll be outcasted if you make the wrong decision. Yeah, I think there's so much pressure around being able to think about things and talk about things that's ever existed that it's it, it's in the too hard basket for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think that that's why it's important to have these conversations and to yeah. teach people how to think properly and wrestle some of those bigger questions for yourself and be okay with not knowing the answer sometimes, being like, I don't know, I haven't landed yet. You know, yeah. That's one of the things that was... I felt a lot of pressure with the vaccine. Um, I have a friend of mine who was like, so are you going to get it or not? And yeah. I was like, I, I'm not sure yet. I, I, I haven't, I don't have enough data to make that decision. He's like, well, are you a doctor? And I'm like, I don't find that question useful. Yeah. It's like, if that presupposes that if I don't have a degree, I can't make a decision on my own. And then I must trust doctors. You yeah. know, I, I've, I've, I've gone to a lot of overweight doctors and asked for health advice before, and that didn't reconcile with me very well. I thought yeah. you obviously don't um, uh, do what you preach, so I'm not going to listen to you at all. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's it's a very challenging answer to that very good question. And as which doctor, right? <laughs> which doctor would you like me to? Because there's there's people that think differently. That's right, exactly. And I think all of us know now that if you want to really look after your health, You've got to pretty much go see a collection of people. Yeah. You, you get one bit of advice from a doctor, then you go see a naturopath, then you go see a Cairo, and you're yeah. putting the puzzle together. Um, and it takes a lot of effort and it takes you thinking about stuff yourself and you've got to take it into your own responsibility because if you outsource it, uh, like I'll give you an example. I, I had an intense stabbing pain inside my ear um, come and go and I went to a doctor and they said, it's probably this and it wasn't that. And they said, well, it could be this and it wasn't that. And then it was like, sorry, that's as far as we go. And now I'm dealing with a nerve pain, which is the most intense, literally feels like an ice pick to the side of the head. And I had to go to, I got x-rays. I asked for things to be done. I went and found out what it was um, through trying out probably four or five different styles of practitioners yeah. Unless you take responsibility to do that, you have to put up with the pain. Yeah. And 
just take, and, and it's very hard to do. So I think that sometimes the discomfort of something might force you to think about it more. And I think that's a good thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the other things that really came to mind, well, two things. One was how we idolise people. Mm. Right? So whether it be idolising doctors, governments, celebrities, Mm. Um, so that was really something that really stood out and I was disappointed in some people mm. in the last couple of years uh, and together with that was the authenticity of people uh, speaking out or not speaking out and about what they truly believe and and uh, and so I think that one of the things that I did from very early on was speak what I thought was the truth and even if I was still trying to work it out. Um, for me, it was like, if I'm going to try and protect people in some way that I think is right, then I'm going to talk about it, regardless of how it affects my financial business, regardless if I, because I remember the first time I, I spoke out with what I believed was happening and all I was talking about was it was about just some critical thinking that was all I was talking about and some social conditioning. I lost a 1,000 people a thousand followers on Facebook in one day mm. with one post. Mm. And it was pretty much very generalized me talking about critical thinking and making sure that we challenge things, information, uh, and people didn't like it. Um, and so, you know, it was a bit of, it was a risk for me. But at the end of the day, I walked away, even though I lost a thousand followers, uh, I walked away and thought, you know what, I'm, I'm true to who I am. And my brand is always about speaking your truth and speaking up. Uh, that's what I do for a living. And I could still walk away and go, you know what, I'm really, I feel good about, I can put my head on my pillow and feel good about myself. Um, so those two things about idolising people and then being authentic, because uh, I know that some people might challenge what's happening around but don't say anything. Because um, the fear of fitting in or being being judged, all that sort of stuff pops up for people. Well, and it is difficult because you've got people that it's not only a few people, but it's people probably that you love, your family, your best friends and all that sort of stuff. So it's really, you know, I, I think I've learned so much with the challenges in the last couple of years about myself and about what I stand for um, and about the people around me that, uh, you know, it's been really, really challenging, but, you know, thank God for it because it's really grown. I've grown as a person because of it. Yeah, well said. I think that you've highlighted something that a lot of us aren't trained to do, which is learn how to listen to um, the opposite of what you believe in. And I think that's important for a critical thinking perspective is don't just live in an echo chamber yeah. of, and I used to do this with politics. So when I first got into politics, I just, because I'm, I'm more like middle to the right and in my politics. And so I'd listen to middle right all the time. And I'd just be in this echo chamber of like, we're right and the left is incorrect. Yeah. Um, and I think that for us to grow, we have to listen to the opposite of yeah. what people, what we believe in. And then we have to try it on and be like, I wonder if there's a slight truth in that. Or I wonder if well, I could see how they come to believe that. Because otherwise, all we're going to do is, and this is what social media does because of the algorithm of it yeah. giving us more of what we like, we we become so div divided. And I yeah. wonder how many people deleted you because they were just like, she's wrong. She's wrong. That's it. She's wrong. And so I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Um, versus, well, maybe I don't agree with with the way she's going, but let's keep her in. Let's Let's keep her in the conversation and see what I can learn from it. You know, one of the things that I find amazingly common, and I used to be this as well, is I have to have, I used to have so many opinions on the Bible without reading the Bible. Yeah. And I find that extremely common today. People argue with me about it, and I'm up for the argument. I think it's great. Yeah. And they say, well, that's not what the Bible means. And I'll say, well, actually it is. Here's, yeah. here's, a, here's a scripture that says this is, you know, I had a person say to me that the Bible, um, God doesn't want us to call him father. And I said, well, here's, the, the, the Lord's Prayer starts with our Father who are in heaven. Yeah. There are so many examples. Um, we are taught to cry out, Abba, Father. And yeah. that's just an example of um, today's world. We, we, hear one, we hear one podcast, one interview, we're an expert. 
that person's wrong because we listen to one critic talk about it. Let's drown out the opposites. And I think it's so healthy to learn from people that disagree with you. It's yeah. such a powerful gift. And it is so challenging. Like I pick myself up on that all the time, Matt. Like, like I'll see a post and I'll, like, oh, and I'll roll my eyes. Yeah. Like I'm looking at it and I go, no, yeah. try it on, JJ. That's, that's my, uh, how many times I've said that in the last couple of years, try it on. Yeah. Uh, and because, you know, and, and it's, you know, I've been so grateful for my son who has, you know, he's, he's challenged me so much in the last few years about my beliefs and he's taught me so much. Uh, and I love that because we can say whether we're so open, I can say, yeah, I'm really open. I challenge my beliefs, but really I, I, there are beliefs that you, you just keep protecting. And once you've become aware of it and you go, oh my goodness, I am really, I am not open-minded with this. <laughs> You know, just try it on, keep trying things on and even though it's difficult uh, and that's a continual journey for me uh, to, to be trying things on and challenging my old beliefs um, so that I can continue to grow and it's never been an easy process for me um, but I suppose there's some people that I do see that don't even want to try it on. Yeah. You know, they've made up their mind and they, they've just like they're fixed and they've been fixed, some of them have been fixed for a very long time. Yeah, very true. And very hard to help those people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what would you, so I've got a couple of, of questions actually from coaches yeah. um, that have actually asked some questions, which is uh, fantastic from Facebook. So one of the questions from Serena, she says, does the path of coaching and self-development make us more inclined to rely on our own wisdom and intellect and less inclined to trust God? Um, I think that it does if there is no basis for faith or uh, um, a religion or a belief in God in that person's ar arena. So without religion, because I know, for example, in the school that we both trained at at the Coaching Institute, um, my guess is 30% of them would be Christians um, or uh, there's a lot of Muslims also. Um, yeah. And then I would say about 60% would be Eastern spirituality, like totally into like yoga and Reiki and stuff like that. And then yeah. it'd be a small percent, maybe maybe 10% would be atheists. Yeah. So I think if you're void of, for example, Christianity, then yeah, I do think it does. It is going to lean towards you relying too much on yourself. Um, and that's, I think, the danger of it. Personally, yeah. I believe that. Now, if you don't yeah. believe in Christianity, you don't care because you think that you are the solution to all of your problems anyway, because that's the other alternative. Yeah. That you are the universe, uh, which obviously Christianity and that idea do not marry. That's yeah. actually one thing that a lot of people have brought up. They've said, oh, Christianity is just the same. I'm like, it's actually not. It's completely different. You have to read the Bible to understand yeah. that. Jesus teaches us to rely on him. Jesus is God, to rely on God instead of relying on ourselves. So um, it's part of the challenge that I've had integrating my work through being a coach where I used to preach the gospel of self-reliance um, and now I don't. I just avoid it. I don't speak up against it inside the school because I don't believe that's the right thing to do because yeah. many people have joined the school and they have that belief and I want to respect that. Yeah. Um, but I think that as a Christian, you've got to have that foundation that you are not the solution to everything. Give some things up to prayer or the Bible says, give all things up to mm -hmm. prayer and then appreciate, appreciate that you still need to go do stuff. You still need to be responsible. You still you know, um, God said, come to us through a sound mind. He means like, think about stuff. Yeah. Don't be lazy in your thinking. So I ultimately, when I first became a Christian, I was like, oh no, I don't think I can be a coach at all. What do I do? You know, the gospel's the answer to everything. But then I started realizing that <clears throat> there's a place for coaching. And I, I really believe that there okay. is. Um, I, I, I still have clients right now and I help them grieve things. I, I work with couples in relationships. Um, I do some business mentoring. And I think there's a space for all of that 
but I just never, I wouldn't work with anyone who wanted me to confirm that they are the solution to all of their problems and there's nothing outside of themselves. I wouldn't, I'd never confirm it yeah. because I don't believe that it's true at all. And I think that we need to be careful. Actually, I'll give one more insight as well. Um, I don't believe that you are enough. And that is a major doctrine of personal development. Yes. You are enough. You are enough exactly the way that you are. I don't believe that at all. Yeah. I used to believe that. Yeah. So you are perfect the way that you are. You are enough just the way you are today is fine. You just need to realize it. But then if you think about that, even if you just think about it with critical thinking, well, then if you apply that to yourself, most people are going to look within and go, I don't really feel enough at all. I don't yes. I feel like there's a lot of work to be done here. Yeah. And so the gospel is the opposite. The gospel says you are not enough and that's the way that you've been designed. And mm-hmm. when you reach out and you realize that you need a savior, which is not a popular conversation. Yeah. Most people don't want that. They go, I don't need a savior. But when you realize that you need one, you're in drastic need of one, um, then you are saved through that process through recognizing Jesus as your Lord. So to recognize that I am not enough and therefore God will complete that part in me, not through my own effort. Cause you know, the, the Jesus talks about, you can't come to me through works, which means you can't earn your way yeah. into heaven and personal development kind of says the opposite. It says, yes, you can. You just need to be better at meditation, better at yoga, better at this, better at that. And then you'll get there. And I found that really stressful. I never got there. It was a lot of effort and I feel so much more peace, grace, patience, love, and grace than I ever had. And I'm not earning it. You know, I'm not, it's not because I'm a good Christian. It's just the deal. So yeah, yeah, I think that they are in conflict and there are usefulness. There's a useful part of coaching though, that we can still very much utilize. Yeah. And it's really about, I see it as really humbling yourself as well. In regards to you know, and and even I suppose knowing that that you know when you said you've got a savior, mm. even people that that even think about coaching, having a coach is a big thing for them. <laughs> but then actually knowing, hey, I can't. There's there's a savior. There's a lot bigger than me, and I am not perfect, and I never will be perfect. Yeah. Um, and being and humbling yourself. Um, and still, and I've got that saying that I tried to say before, I just found it because <laughs> I'll say it better from um, this from Pastor Anderson. He says, work like it depends on you. Pray because it does depend on God. So, and so, and that, that really resonated with me to say, you know, humble yourself. You're not perfect. You'll never be perfect. Mm-hmm. But work like you, you know, that, that you can make things happen in your life, but pray to God. Um, because he, you do depend on him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, Amy, beautiful Amy, has asked a question. She says, how has coaching impacted your journey back into a relationship with God and what's changed for him, for you, re-coaching since stepping back into that belief? Um, well, I... So... I think one of the ways to explain Christianity is that God changes us on the inside. And that's something that every Christian can, can, can explain. You could speak to that yeah. and you could say, well, and in the Bible, it says we get given a new heart. You yeah. take your heart of stone, turn it into a heart of flesh. And so I progressively feel that more and more and more. So um, I had a coaching session and an introduction coaching session with a young uh, person the other night and after the session my wife came in and asked me um, you know how did it go and I just turned to her and I cried for a moment and I just said I'm just so sad for this young person because she's been through so much it just hurts my heart what people go through now previously I wasn't like that I wasn't that type of person I would have thought about it yeah right? and God's changed me on the inside where he's made me thank God, more compassionate. I'm still so much a work in progress, but so much more, I think, caring and loving. So I I actually think I'm God's just, he's making me a better coach. He's making me kinder, less selfish. 
less self-focused. I'm, I'm genuinely so much more concerned about doing the right thing by my clients than I've ever been. It's just on a whole other level. Yeah. Um, I never want to put money ahead of anything. Yeah. Uh, where previously I probably would have, you know, I would have said that, but I probably would have made a couple of allowances here and there so I could make another buck somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so I think that, cause like I pray, I pray for my clients um, and I pray for, I pray for their hearts where previously I think I saw my job as I'm rocking up, delivering a service and then that's it. I do my best. I deliver my service, but it really is your responsibility to go and change. Yeah. And so for me, um, the relationship that I have with God has just changed the way I think that I see my role in other people's lives. Um, I love it when a client asks me about God. I never bring it up because I've got clients that are not believers and yeah. I will never break the, I'm never going to start ministering to people that don't want to be ministered to. Yeah. But every now and then I have a client that'll say to me, they'll ask me a question and I'm thinking, yes. And then uh, I had a, I've had a guy that I'm working with at the moment who asked me to pray for him at the end of the session. Yeah. And at the end he goes, gee, that felt good, didn't it? I'm like, it's good, isn't it? And then he asked me again to pray for him at the end of the, so little things like that just give me so much more joy. I think I'm, I think I'm much more connected to the work than I've ever been. And I definitely attribute that to the, change God has made in me for sure. Beautiful. And the last question from Facebook, uh, which is from Roz, beautiful Roz. She says, how does one truly set their eyes upon God in a world that is controlled by Satan? Whilst vigilant methods, what what vigilant methods do you employ to be not deceived by evil? Cool. Well, I think that it's a really great question. I think that the um, uh, C.S. Lewis talks about this well in his book, Mere Christianity, that you can't be a Christian on your own. So God calls us to fellowship. Yeah. He calls us to go to church. And church isn't just about, you know, I know that there's a lot of rock concert churches you can go to, which are epic, and the praise and worship is, you know, 10 out of 10. But it's about the fellowship. So it's not just about the experience. And I think that um, we are called to keep each other on track. I think the biggest defense is, um, you know, he, God says, be in the world, but don't be of the world. So yeah. like I live in a little Christian bubble. It's different. I don't think I live in the normal world. Um, yeah. I, for example, I pray when I wake up, I read a little bit of the Bible. I pray when I go to sleep, I read the Bible. My wife and I pray for people and pray for ourselves. Um, we have that beautiful little buffer um, this morning, I went to a Bible study with a group of men. Um, tomorrow night, I'll go to another Bible study. I'll go to church on Sunday. And I want to build as many Christian relationships as I possibly can because we keep each other on track. Yeah. So COVID, I didn't do that at all. So I became a Christian through COVID and I watched things on YouTube. And I found it very hard to uh, stay on track because I was on my own. I was trying to pull it off on my own where I think that God calls us to be with each other for good reason, because we want to be examples, inspire each other, um, pull each other in when we, when we go a little bit too far, be like, Hey, is that the best like movie for you to watch tonight with your kids? I don't know about that. Maybe we should have a think about that. But all those little things make a huge difference. Um, and so I kind of like the idea that I don't fully live in the world anymore, if that kind of makes sense. I yeah. live in a, in a in a beautiful little bubble, and I think that's the way God taught us to live. You know, I think about the. Um, have you started watching the the Chosen? No, no, I haven't yet. Yeah. It's such a good quality show, but that's a really great show where they um, it, they they show uh, Jesus' disciples living with him, and if you think about those times. It would have been so dangerous to be a Christian in those times. And you've got these major cities where you had to be careful showing that you were a Christian or that you were praying and things like that. And so you had to live kind of on the outskirts, but you would live together and you would live with joy in your heart still. And I think about that in today's world. And I, I don't want to be a bringer. I don't want to be one of those conspiracy theory people, but I think it's going to get worse for people of faith um, as, as you look at what's happening with politics 
Um, yep. So many people don't understand and they hate it if you're a Christian because you're automatically someone who doesn't agree with a whole bunch of political realms. And I think that we're going to need to just like continue our little beautiful communities and not partake in lots of stuff. But in saying that, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I don't feel like I'm missing out on one thing. Yeah. I feel like everyone else is missing out. Yeah. It doesn't have access to the, the joy that we feel. So, yeah. yeah, fellowship would be my answer on that one. Yeah, beautiful. Well, it's been so awesome. Talk. I could talk to you for hours, Matt. So much fun. Let's this, do another hour. Okay. <laughs> I've got some rapid questions for you, the 10 fun questions. Yes, okay. Right, I'm going to wrap sure. up with these. So. I feel so much more confident with everything else. But Okay, go. <laughs> What are your top three books that oh, you would tell people to read? Sounds cheesy, but the Bible. It's the best yeah. book that exists. I would I would read Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I think that's just a, an absolute classic. Okay. Um, and then I think I'm, so I'm going to cheat and choose one from behind me. Um, you know what? I'll go, a secular one that's really awesome. It's called Hold Me Tight by Dr. Sue Johnson. Oh, I've uh, read that. Relationships is so good. Sue Johnson is one of the leaders of attachment theory and yeah. um, I teach her work all the time. Awesome. Awesome. That's a new book for me to read. Um, what's your favourite holiday destination? Um, anywhere in Asia, probably. I'd love to go to the Philippines, but I could go back to Bali and Thailand forever. I just love it so much. Yeah. Not the popular places, but the quiet places, I love it. Yeah. Oh, I could do with some hot weather right now. Um, are you a dog person or a cat person or both? Um, I'm both. I just love them, but I'm allergic to both of them. How much does that sound? Oh, really? Oh, no, I've got my little puppy dog just under my, he's been under my feet all, all day. I'm so jealous. Oh, wow. Um, what's one thing on your bucket list? Um, well, it used to be stuff that would be, you know, like jumping out of a plane, but now I'm a dad. I just want to stay alive. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think I might like to be a pastor one day. And eventually wow. become a minister. I think that would be really awesome. That I don't know when that'll happen, but yeah. That would be fabulous. I could absolutely see you doing that. What would you, who would play you in a movie? Who would play me? Yes. The Rock. <laughs> really? Just because I want to have more muscle. <laughs> I, there's a guy, I can't remember what his name is. Anyway, you look like him and I would have said him. Anyway, can't remember what his name is. He's very popular. Uh, <laughs> best piece of advice you have been given? Oh, gosh, best piece of advice. Oh, I feel like this is like a, a cheesy answer, but I think that the best bit of advice I've been given is to like study the Bible. It's changed my life in so many ways. It's profound. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. If you weren't a coach, what would you be? Ooh, if I wasn't a coach, um, if I was going to like fully be something completely different, I think I'd be a gardener. I think I like the idea of being a gardener on the Sunshine Coast, nowhere cold, but yeah. somewhere where I'm outdoors all day. I like the idea of that. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I could never be a gardener. I, I kill plants. Oh, no. <laughs> well, what TV character do you see yourself in? Um, I think I'd like to be MacGyver. <laughs> Fixing things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been like, I think he inspired me a lot actually as a kid. I will always like try and like make some kind of, you know, some kind of solution to something. Yeah, yeah I'm not very good at it though, but I like that. <laughs> Uh, and what is the legacy you want to leave? Uh, I just I want to leave a family of people, uh, whoever my family consists of, that are um, full of full of joy, full of full of God's grace. That's it. Beautiful. I love that. All right, I'm ready for my ten questions. Okay, okay, okay. Favorite movie kind, of all time? Are you gonna be kind to me, Matt? Yes. You're challenging me. <laughs> oh, no, they're, they're all like really simple ones. So, favorite okay. movie of all time. My favourite movie, oh, that's it's not even simple. Uh, <laughs> my favourite movie, um, oh, gee, I can't even think of a favourite movie. I see, I'm thinking of my old self. Yep. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yep. And my old self would have been stuff like uh, something about Mary, right? Yep. But then I think about those sort of things and what yep. I know now. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Totally, um, totally. 
Yeah, but that's the first one that comes out. Which... That's right. Favorite movie from the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is a, you might think about this one. What was your favorite song from the nineties? Is Wham in the nineties? I think they were the eighties. Oh. <laughs> Maybe they might be a little bit of nineties as well, though. Yeah, because I am old. <laughs> That's all right. We'll take when. Wake me up before you go go. And I used to have the t shirt that had go go in, I think yeah. it was pink, hot pink. That's I thought it was so cool. That's so good. All right. Um, an embarrassing moment that you've had recently you'd be willing to share? Uh, the last embarrassing moment that I remember is being on stage and falling on my butt. <laughs> really? And then I just incorporated it into my presentation. <laughs> oh, gosh. That is so funny. That is so funny. Um, have you ever liked any of our prime ministers? And if you have, who? who? Uh, our prime ministers? No. <laughs> no, but I thought that I liked Obama, but I've changed my mind on that. Yep, fair enough. I think a lot of people would have been the same. Yeah. Um, John Farnham did a lot of comeback tours. Do you think he should come back? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we should bring him back. Farnham. He can come as many times as he wants. I am with you on that. We need him. Back. We need him back. I completely agree with you. Um, when you go to the toilet, do you fold or scrunch? Fold. Same. Who scrunches? And, and the toilet paper has to go over the top, people. Not underneath. Over yeah. the top. Over the top. I'm with you. I don't know who scrunches. It seems like a chaotic thing to do in life. Um, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Uh, it would. I've got three animals. I have to have three. So a dog, because I absolutely love dogs, uh, or a dolphin, because I just think the last time I swam with a dolphin, I just nearly cried, oh. and or an elephant, because they're just so majestic, amazing. So good. Maybe you could be a combination of all of those things. Yeah. <laughs> if you could choose a superpower, what would it be? Uh, to be invisible. Oh. I'd just go everywhere and just... Just like listening to conversations. <laughs> that would be so cool. I love it. <laughs> um, favourite Disney movie when you were a kid? Uh, favourite Disney... Uh, it, would, uh, it would probably be Cinderella. Oh, nice. It would to be her. Good movie. <laughs> and if you could be a cartoon character, what cartoon character would you be? Tweety Bird, because that was my favourite. <laughs> Tweety Bird, that's so good. Old school. I look at, the, again, the old me, if I look at the old me and I'm thinking, even when you're saying what's your favourite, you know, show when you were little, like Cinderella, and then knowing, you know, some of these movies that, that kids are watching now with all the different social yeah. conditioning in them, it's like, wow, I just don't know what I like anymore. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Okay, well done thank you so much so uh matt it's been a pleasure i love picking your brain and thank you so much for serving um, my community today how can people get in touch with you um so you can come to my website which is just my name.com so matt .com. um you can find there's a youtube channel there that you can check out you can listen to my podcast on spotify uh, you can get in touch with me there and i've got like some free resources you can check out as well yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. And yes, we're going to, we absolutely have to do this again so we can hone in on even one subject. Yeah. Um, and go deeper in one subject. That would be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Thank you.